Hello everybody once again my name is Iftikhar Khan and today we'll be doing a lesson on the formation of urine so in this lesson i'll tell how exactly is the urine formed in our body in the nephrons basically so it's a part of the collection on the excretory system so let's start so firstly about me 10th rank in aims 2013 currently pursuing mbbs from aims and also i am a kvs scholar and have been selected in the biology olympia do follow me on un academy on this link which is given here so let's start so firstly we will start with the three main steps in urine formation the three main steps of urine formation so as they named the ultra filtration tubular reabsorption and tubular secretion so these are the three main steps in urine formation so let's start off with ultra filtration so what does the term ultra filtration mean so ultra filtration takes place in the glomeruli and the bowman's capsule so in this case the blood is filtered out and the glomerular filtrate is formed the blood is filtered at high pressure that is that's why we call it ultra filtration another reason for being called the ultra filtration is that proteins and blood cells do not pass this membrane so do not pass this membrane the membrane which is the uh, slit formation which is the filtration slit or the slit pore it is formed by three components these components are the endothelium of the glomerular blood vessels then the basement membrane between them and the epithelium of the bowman's capsule which have the specific cells known as podocytes which i told you about in the previous lesson so almost all the constituents of the blood are filtered into the bowman's capsule except the proteins and the blood cells the blood corpuscles so and firstly we'll take a look at how this pressure the filtration pressure is maintained so in the last lecture also i told you that the diameter of the afferent arteriole is larger than the efferent arteriole so in this so due to this due to the difference in the diameter of the two as as you must have read in physics there is a pressure maintained so that this pressure leads to the filtration of blood through the filtration slit or the slit pores another reason for maintenance of this this pressure is is these three components these three components are ghp that is the glomerular hydrostatic pressure which means the pressure which is exerted by the fluid inside the glomerulus the fluid which is the basically the blood and this value is 60 mm of mercury so it helps in pouring the filtrate inside the bowman's capsule then we have the blood colloidal osmotic pressure this is the blood colloidal osmotic pressure so this blood colloidal osmotic pressure is actually counteracting the glomerular hydrostatic pressure and the albumin and all the other solutes which help increasing the osmotic pressure uh, they take back they try to take back the filtrate and and try to decrease its volume so this pressure is 30 mm of mercury then we have the capsular hydrostatic pressure so all the fluid that's present in the bowman's capsule also exert a pressure called as the capsular hydrostatic pressure and it tries to counteract the filtration process so the net glomerular filtration process will will uh, subtract the blood colloidal osmotic pressure and capsular hydrostatic pressure from the glomerular hydrostatic pressure so the net is 10 mm of mercury that is the glomerular filtration process 
Another thing is the concept of glomerular filtration rate. So this is a very important criteria for the renal functions in assessing the renal functions. So the normal level of the glomerular filtration rate is 120 ml per minute or which transpires out to be 180 liters per day. So it's 125 ml per minute. Another thing nearly 1000 to 1200 ml of blood which is nearly one fifth of the total blood volume is filtered out by the kidneys each minute. So the glomerular filtration process, glomerular filtration rate is basically the quantity of the, the, the quantity of the filtrate, the quantity of the filtrate in all the glomeruli of both the kidneys, of all the nephrons. It's the cumulative of all of them. Then we have tubular reabsorption. So we have to take care that these are this is one of the important facts that reabsorption take place in tubules as well then we have the henle's loop then we have the dct and the collecting duct so i'll explain it in detail in the following diagram so let's go go directly to that then we have the process of tubular secretion which takes place in pct henle's loop distal convoluted tubule and the collecting duct so let's look at this diagram this is basically diagram from the ncert so it's like i've made it by hand so this is is the basically the role of various tubules in the filtration process the formation of urine so firstly we'll take a look at the proximal convoluted tubule which is the major site of reabsorption the tubular reabsorption all of in this site almost all the glucose almost 100 percent of the glucose is reabsorbed almost 70 to 80 percent of the, all the electrolytes and water is reabsorbed by this side so as you can see and it also reabsorbs bicarbonate to maintain the acid base balance and tubular secretion also takes place here in the form of secretion of hydrogen ions ammonium ions to maintain the acid base balance then we have the loop of henle then we have the loop of henle which is very important and it is divided into descending limb and the ascending limb the descending limb is basically the concentrating limb as it is permeable to water and is impermeable to solutes so as we go down into the medulla the glomerular filtrate becomes more and more concentrated into as we go down and the this limb the ascending limb is basically the diluting limb and it has two parts the thin ascending limb and the thick ascending limb in the thin ascending limb it is soluble to the electrolytes so nacl is reabsorbed and the solute becomes more and more and the osmotic pressure keeps on decreasing as the amount of water remains the same and the nacl is being reabsorbed so as we go up, this is a very important part, the thick ascending limb also leads to NaCl absorption. And but this is very important that this absorption is an active absorption as compared to others which was passive absorption. Another thing to keep in mind that in tubular reabsorption, uh, the glucose amino acids and Na plus ions are absorbed actively while the other nitrogenous waste absorbed passively water absorption is also passive only then we come to dct which leads to conditional reabsorption that is only when the need is there it will reabsorb the nacl and water and it also reabsorbs bicarbonate ions and sick also secretes potassium and hydrogen ions to maintain the acid base balance of the body so and it's and the aldosterone the hormone aldosterone acts here and so it leads to secretion of k plus and absorption of nacl and water now finally we have the collecting ducts which do not do much function just in the medullary duct it will lead to absorption of urea to maintain the high osmolarity and some water absorbed and ph and ionic balance is maintained 
सो दैट्स अबाउट इट थैंक यू पीस